All right, so when we talked yesterday about the type of products that you are going to offer in your business, um, and then today we're going to photograph those products for you to be able to share because it's kind of that bit of a flow on effect. Um, when it comes to you know, creating content to share on your social media pages, uh, creating a media library, which we've talked about, adding products, finding the right products, and now photographing the products. And we talk about brand and style. I'm gonna start there when it comes to this kind of thing because when you are photographing your products, they need to be photographed in a way that is going to be a clear representation of your brand and style. As well as choosing the right products, so should the way that you photograph them to put into your pricing and information document that you send out to your clients. You want that to have impact and you want it to um, you know, create a little bit of excitement as well about the products and services that you offer for your customers. And then when you're sharing this on your website, it's got to then match the branding on your site as well. And I'm talking about the different types of colors that you use to you know, um, make your blog or your website look really pretty, the colors in your logo, um, what are sort of the main sort of tones that you use. So I've put a few things here together. The first product that I've got down here is my showcase. And this is my 20 matted prints that come in a beautiful timber box um, with that Perspex lid. So the photos that I've chosen have got these beautiful, warm sort of, you know, um, brown, earthy tones to it. So I've chosen um, you know a beautiful sort of earthy tone here and some native flowers that are going to go really well with that my logo is it's very simple it's actually a very very dark charcoal um, gray tone so that goes with everything but on my website I use a lot of um, very rich colors and tones I've got beautiful dark greens I've got um, you know some really beautiful sort of uh, dark browns and gold colors so however I photograph this it's going to look really good in you know um, and consistent with that brand and color theme that I've got going on on my site so important um, and that's the thing you want it all to to really sort of flow and um, and I sort of you know complement each other but if I had um, pink tones in my website if I had pink tones in my logo then I would have probably chosen some photographs that had some of those pink tones in it to represent this product and added some sort of pink flowers and things like that to con to complement it if that makes sense and then over here if I had some, you know, beautiful green tones, emerald green tones, and I do have some green tones in my new website, which we're going to share very soon. Um, and if you go to actually my other website, which is if you want to have, you know, an idea in terms of inspiration and colour, I do have another website, which is kellybrown.com.au. And on there, you can see the theming um, and the way that I've laid everything out in terms of that, that overall brand and style. So if you had some green sort of earthy tones on your website, then you know picking a, a setup that's got some green tones in it would really complement everything else that you've got going on. So when you're photographing your products, I highly recommend sticking with the tones and the colors that you've already got within that branding in terms of your, um, you know, the, the information, the, the marketing material that you put out there, your logo and things like that. So I can see quite a few comments coming through. If you've got any questions at all about what we're doing, um, pop them into the comments. Garrett's gonna read those questions out to me and I'm gonna try and share as much as I possibly can here while I go through this setup. But when it does come to photographing your products, it's very similar to photographing, obviously, a, a baby in your studio. When we talk about the way that we style a setup, and you can see here that I've kept it really simple, it is basically just the box with a couple of prints, loose prints outside, a wrap with some beautiful texture. I love that sort of, you know, that torn edge, and that matches really well with my other products in terms of my album with that beautiful torn edge. And then I've kept it really simple with a native flower, like I said. But you can see here how I have actually kind of added it in a way that frames the setup. 
So I've got the flowers off to the side and they've kind of curved around with the, the mats there and, um, and the way that I've kind of lined it up to, to make it all sort of, you know, bring you back into the centre of this to show, really showcase, I suppose, the box itself. Um, when you're taking different shots, you're obviously going to use different ratios of photographs, like different sizes in terms of a square, you know, an eight by 10 ratio or a three by two ratio in terms of the material that you are going to use. So my advice is to get as many different angles and, um, and scenarios with each piece that you can add to your media library so that you can go back and continually use them as stock photos. You can do uh, social media posts, um, Instagram, you can do uh, Facebook and share your products on, on, um, on there as well. And then you can obviously put them into blog posts to talk a little bit about the products that you offer as well, which I highly recommend. So I've kind of set this up here with a three by two ratio in mind. So Garrett's actually tethered me. You'll be able to see the photos I take. We will try and hope it works. <laughs> and so that I don't bump my microphone there, I'm gonna hold on to my strap. Normally if I was photographing a baby, I would have my strap around my neck so that nothing was, was going to happen here. And just to make sure that I'm not getting that lead, hang on, give me two seconds, I'll come around this way. So I'm gonna use that pole, I'm gonna use that pole there to help keep the orange lead out of the way. All right. So am I shooting live view here, Garrett, for you? Uh, or you I can shoot can normally? Shoot normal, oh, fantastic. I know, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to grab a quick shot to show you what I mean about filling the frame when it comes to the way that you set up a particular product and style it. All right. Oh, wow. So you can see the top, it's going to come up in a second for you. So you can see the top of the wrap kind of takes you from the, the top left hand corner of the frame and then the wrap kind of leads you down into the bottom right hand corner of the frame. So if you wanted to, looking at that, I'm sort of looking and going, well, there's a little bit here that's kind of sticking out. You know, I could pull that in, I could pull that up a bit. So it sort of lined up a bit better with the edges of the frame and then down here, I could kind of come up a bit higher there and point that down to flow with that frame just a bit more. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. And I'm also trying to make the edges of the box at the top here line up so that they're nice and level with the edge of that frame as well. So I'm just gonna grab another shot here. And just those little changes. And we'll wait for that one to come up. Now we're gonna sit with inside that frame a little better. Look at that. Oh, I like that. Okay, so there's my, you know, my main sort of hero shot of that particular setup, but this is where I would come in and I would get some really close detail shots of the product itself. Um, and then I would sort of change it up so that I could shoot it for a square crop. Um, I could shoot it for um, a vertical crop as well for your Instagram stories. Um, what else? <laughs> Lots of different ways that you can photograph them for different social media platforms um, so that you can share them online. So I hope that that's going to give you some inspiration to, to start doing this. Um, a question there about the watermark, second from the bottom. Can you read that one? Okay, when it comes to your watermark, what do you suggest is the best type, or best type to go with? a signature of your name or your logo. Do you know when it comes to watermarking, so this is where um, the way that you do brand your images to send to your clients and the way that you brand your products is, you know, it's, it's completely up to you. It can be very personal. You might have a watermark that is just your website, like www.blahblahblah.com. 
that could be your, your branding, that could be the way that you watermark your photographs, or it could be your logo added multiple times if you're doing online galleries so that obviously it says do not copy. Um, but if you're giving your clients little low res files with the high res files already prepared, ready for social media posting, then I would put, you know, a beautiful little logo of your, um, sorry, watermark of your logo very subtly on the image so that it complements the photo. Obviously, you know, they're going to share it and, um, but they're not going to share it if you splash it all the way across that photograph. So when it comes to branding, I would make it complement the product, complement the photograph when it's for sharing online. So for here, for example, with this one, I'm looking at this photograph and I'm thinking the best place for me to put my logo would be either in the top right hand corner to balance it out or in the bottom left hand corner. So if I put my logo on the white mat, the, the client might think that the mat comes with the logo on it. So you've got to be careful in that sense. Obviously, we want to brand our stuff so people don't steal it, don't take it when we are sharing it. But at the same time, you don't want um, your clients or potential clients to think, oh, no, I don't really know if I want, you know, a whole heap of matted prints with a big logo all over it. So, because they don't know that you've only done that just for social media posting. Or website posting so I would put it very subtly you know off to the side um, and for me I'm looking at this going bottom left hand corner for my logo because of the way that the logo is designed it'll sit nicely there and sort of flow in with the image itself but it is very personal it's up to you depending on whether or not you want to use like I said your website to brand your photos so that it gives people a, a direct way to contact you if they happen to see it somewhere online or um, your logo. <laughs> I just read someone else's comment and no, my brain went. The next comment is, where is your light placed? I've actually set up a shot here. So ah, fantastic. Check this out. These are my windows in my studio. I'm using natural light today. It is beautiful soft light. I'm not that close, so I've got that beautiful sort of, you know, fall off over here. And because I'm shooting white mats, I want to make sure obviously I don't overexpose them. Um, and create too many sort of um, harsher contrasty shadows as well. But yeah, I've also blocked off the bottom part of the window so that the light is falling down here and it's not necessarily hitting the floor over there and bouncing up. So I've got a little bit more control over the, the direction of that light. But yeah, today we're doing natural light. And if a cloud happens to go in front of a sun, you might see the room become a little cooler um, or, or um, warm up, but it's, um, it's not a bad day outside here in it's Brisbane a few today. Times already. Yeah, it has actually. Yeah. All right, so if you have a macro lens, I highly recommend coming in and getting some beautiful close up details of your products. So, for example, if I want to get a close up here of this particular product, then I would simply just move the top mats and I would come in and I would. I would shoot just the corner to sort of show you um, exactly how well my products have been crafted. So I'd zoom in, line up that edge so the perspective is all right, making sure nothing's too distracting towards the edge of the frame. And this is going to help you best explain your products to your clients with the words that you use. When you talk about the craftsmanship, when you talk about the quality, all of those things. So, you know, don't always worry about the beautiful pullback shots. Take beautiful close-up shots as well, especially if you've got a macro lens. I'm using my 24 to 70 and what I do when I get it, want to get those beautiful close-up shots is I will come in as close as I possibly can to get um, get it in, you know, in frame, nice and close, and then I will sort of pull back to where it allows me to focus. Alrighty, so, like I said before, if I was styling with the, um, the pink or the green for this particular product, then I would, you know, do that. So let's actually do a square setup with the pink. That wasn't very graceful, was it? <laughs> 
have to be. Do you know what? The place of love. I used to be very flexible. I'm not anymore, as I've gotten older, and my mic pack just fell off. I'm hitting on the stool. Can you fix it? No, it's okay. I get it. Alrighty, so we've used our beautiful goldy colours. Let's just say that you know you want to do a beautiful um, pink setup. If you've got pinks just to show you how I would use these. And the thing with adding different elements like this is, you want them to complement the setup. You don't want them to be distracting. It's the same when we're photographing babies. If you have, um, you know, pictures, I mean, sorry, you know, big plants everywhere and you, you've got um, stuff going everywhere, then it's gonna get very, very distracting. You want to highlight and frame the, the hero of the shot, and today that's our product. Kelly, what approach would you take if you only had studio lights? Oh, exact same. Yeah, you could do this with studio lights, no problem. You just want to make sure if you're photographing anything that's got, you know, um, glass or um, perspex, anything that's reflective, you know, have a look at... Uh, the way that you are softening and modifying that light to create beautiful soft light and that it is not creating too many sort of reflections um, in your products. Okay, so this time we're going to go for a bit of a square setup. So you can see I'm kind of um, putting my fabric down here in a way that it is nice and square. But again, we don't want to create too many leading lines that are going to draw your eye out of the frame. So same product if you were going for a square approach. This time I might sort of put it slightly off centre so that I'm not lining it up with, with the actual um, edge of the frame. I'm going to use a couple of these again underneath so you won't really see them. And you know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this kind of thing, so I actually did say to Garrett before, I wish Michelle was here. She's so much better at this than I am. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to go for that square sort of look here. Oh, maybe I will line that up with the top of the frame. Michelle is watching, maybe she, should, she can give you some suggestions. Some tips, some pointers. <laughs> we often have fun um, playing with different materials and things like that in the studio. And I think it is sometimes just a great way to kind of recharge, reset, have some fun. Uh, there's a question here about when I try to photograph detail shots with my 50mm and my Nikon D750, it doesn't let me get closer than one metre. Is that normal? Uh, Is that because it's a crop sensor? Yeah, it might be. So you might have to try a, a different lens, yeah, or um, maybe a camera body. But yeah, I'm not familiar with the Nikon cameras either, so... I'm not um, probably the best person to answer that, but if somebody else in the group is a Nikon user, um, please, or Nikon for our Americans, I <laughs> always say it wrong, um, please answer that question for me. All right, so I am f fluffing, as we call it here, um, a little bit. I just want to build that up a little bit higher there. So I keep a lot of things like this um, that I can use. But yeah, I've kind of gone with the top and the bottom there to sort of frame it. And I'm not loving this bit here, but I'll stand up and have a look at it. But yeah, if you're doing a square sort of setup, if you're putting multiple products side by side, this is a nice um,
All right. Deborah Freeman says she needs a Michelle too. <laughs> One of my favorite jobs that I ever had was window dressing in retail. Oh, I just used to enjoy that experience so much. Okay, let's get a shot of that and see what that looks like. I don't want that to look like a horn up there, but it's kind of doing that. So with a square sort of set up like this, again, I would shoot it from above getting over the top, giving it a little bit of room around the outside. Oh, that's pretty. And then, then I can crop that as a square. Okay, so you can have a bit of fun with that. And obviously it is going to be very personal sort of in terms of the way that you style your setups. So now if we were going to go with something that was a bit more portrait and like again, you would just get as many different close up shots as you possibly can of all the sort of beautiful little details. Even leaving the, um, leaving the, Let's pop the pink image inside. Oh gosh. Get that in there. And now getting a nice close sort of tight shot of that top corner. Um, for, for some of your detail shots. Now that was obviously a really quick little play. All right, got any more questions coming through? Uh, are these real dry flowers? Yes, so you just have to be careful because as they sort of um, dry, they can sort of, like you can see, create a little bit of mess. <laughs> and um, making sure that you're not giving yourself too much work later on in post. But yeah, if now I'm going for a bit more of a, a portrait for, you know, for example, my Instagram stories, then this is where you could potentially, and let's pop in these ones. Go with something a little different. So the goes really well with the background. And again, make sure if you have got any glass or perspex or anything like that, you do give it a really good clean. Make sure it's nice and even. So if we're going to go lengthways, then this is where I'd sort of have the box up there on on display. and then sort of place a few of the mats down here. Once again, somebody asking what do we use to broadcast? <laughs> We've had a lot of people asking that, you know, it's, 
It's a program that we, um, you know, we pay for that allows us to use multiple cameras to share this with you. And Garrett sits up there and he just chooses which camera is going to give you the best angle. And what type of wrap is that? Is that a textured crepe, would you say? Um, this is actually just a $5 scarf that I found at Kmart. Thrifty? Yeah. So I would say it's very soft. It is ridiculously soft, this material. And, um, and I am just sort of having a bit of a play here with the way to kind of, um, I suppose, style it and frame it to fit that portrait layout. You know, I'm sure you <laughs> probably didn't think you were going to tune in and watch me fluff for a little while, but... I think this is really good, though. It's giving people the, I suppose, the permission to have a bit of a play and display their products in a way they should be displayed. Like yeah. Like showing all those details and features. It's beautiful. Well, how do you stop glare and reflection on the first pixel glass? So this is where you would um, have to probably use some black reflectors and materials and things like that to sort of block it out and control it and soften it and not have the angle, I suppose, that you're shooting it on. So um, that direct sort of angle that's going to show you what's in the reflection. Now, how am I going to do this, Kelly? All right, okay, this might be just as subtle as putting something down there. I don't have a bit that's going to curl around the right way. Oh, this one might. Actually, let's do this up here. There we go. I didn't wear a very appropriate top today, and my apologies. <laughs> okay, so something just very simple like that, a little bit of added texture. Now, I am not photographing a baby, so if I needed to, I could stand on something here above to get the, the entire shot in, or I can just come around to the side here, get that lead out of the way. Get my feet out of it. Mm -hmm. Not happy with that there or that there. Ready. All right, so I have shot that landscape, obviously, so I can get it all in, but I would just rotate that vertically. So if you turn your head to the side, um, that looks really good. And again, I just grab some close-up shots. So I've got another two products here that I'm going to show you really quick, how I could kind of um, get some detail shots and photograph them beautifully. It sure is. I told you I needed a brown one. <laughs> and I've used it for a few different things this week. And when it comes to styling, like a lot of people struggle with it. Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, well, I suppose I've, I, I, it took me a long time to actually find my style. I was doing a lot of things because other people did them their way. But then when I sort of started to identify what I was naturally drawn to, I love very rich colours. I love organic materials. 
um, and tones and I love texture. So when it comes to styling, I'm gonna try and find items and elements like that. But if you are looking for inspiration, think about your favorite homeware magazine. When I go to the supermarket or anywhere like that that sells magazines, I often go to the home um, or the living, you know, home and living sort of section. And one of my favorite magazines is the Vogue Home. I never buy it, but I always look at it on the shelf. But I get lots of inspiration from the way that they use colors, tones and textures together. So I use a lot of these flowers in my setups. I use all of these wraps in my setups. And so for me, I'm less is best kind of person, but what I don't want to do is make something look stark. So when I, if I was just to photograph this product, you know, like that, then it's pretty boring. Whereas I'm adding a little bit of warmth to it in terms of detail. And I'm basically sort of styling it in a way that it is going to connect and um, I suppose, emulate the brand that I've already created within the photos that I take and the way that I have designed my my logo it's very sort of classic and um, simple so the way that I suppose I look at my styling is in that same aspect um, but yeah that would be very boring great for the detail shots like if you want to come in and get some close-up shots of your mats get close-up shots of the um, the actual sort of you know, craftsmanship of the way that your products are made. This is how you do it. You stand them up and you get as many different angles as you possibly can. Use the way that the light comes in. Have a look at the way that the light falls across the product like you would a baby. And um, I'm just here 90 degrees to the light, so it's kind of coming across. And you can turn it in many different ways to get sort of different, um, you know, different sort of, I suppose, um, results in terms of the way that the light sort of falls across the product to highlight the craftsmanship um, in terms of the way that it's made. But yeah, that's um, homeware magazines are my favourite when it comes to how interior designers put, you know, different tones and textures together. I love that. Um, and whereabouts do you get your boxes from, so your products? Um, so yesterday we did a product, we did a, um, like a product sort of review, it wasn't a review really, but it was more about talking on the products that we offer to our clients and if you have a look in the videos section of the group you'll be able to see yesterday's live where we talk about choosing the right products for your brand and style. Um, what works and this is my graphy collection so I'm I created these products with graphy for myself because there wasn't anything out there that I truly loved um, in terms of products and I've changed my products so many times over the years but when I found um, graphy when I came across them and they were so you know excited to work with me in terms of creating something that you know, it was, was really beautiful. It was easy to come up with something that really did go with my brand. Um, Chris Majoris has asked, can this be shared or is it for group members only? Will we be putting it elsewhere? Uh, so, Chris, hi, <laughs> by the way. Um, you can actually find some of my videos on IGTV under Kelly Brown Photographer. Uh, and YouTube and if you just look up Kelly Brown on YouTube you'll find a lot of the videos there but we are you know slowly adding all of the videos and lives that we do here but yes right here at the moment in the group is pretty much where you'll find everything that we are sort of sharing and doing all right so I've got another wrap here and again it's very similar to a woman's scarf but it's got some great texture and tone in it and what I love is I've gone with if I turn my album over I've gone with a colour that's going to match and work really well with the sequoia leather on the back of my album. And I've got my timber box. Ooh. So if I'm going to do another landscape shot of this one, I've got to think about how am I going to you know, display my album beautifully. I might get my first shot really simple here. And what I've kind of done is, again, gone with that, um, you know, sort of left, top left to bottom right. 
um, as I lead your eye through the frame here with the wrap. And then I've got this, the box on a bit of an angle, but the album will be straight on as the main sort of centerpiece of the photograph. And it's gonna line up with the edges of, um, of the frame. Now this is where you could add in something really beautiful to tie in with, um, with the setup. And again, more Australian native flowers. I do love these. So yeah, whenever anyone buys me flowers, I'll often sort of save them, dry them. And if somebody wants to watch this from the beginning, how do they do that? Um, you can come back. The video is recorded as we are going live and we share it back into the group once we're finished. So you can come back and watch over and over again, see the photos, fast forward through the boring fluffing bits. Never. Never <laughs> I'm just going to cover the stems with the wrap there so that they're not sticking out. Oh, that looks pretty. Alrighty. So to the eye, you'll often sort of look at it and go, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then it's not until you put the camera up to, you, up to your face and you start to look at the frame that you go, oh, I need to fix the bottom corner or But you are always better off getting it right in camera than thinking, oh, I can fix it later on. Oh, maybe we might get a better exposure, Kelly. Too busy looking at the frame. <laughs> Too busy lining up the, the top and the bottom corner with the edges. Oh, I like it. And you can see my album is slightly off. That's better. And I've just brought that exposure down a bit more so that makes it a bit richer. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I love that. So that's just the outside of the album. This is where you can start to have a little bit of fun with um, the way that you open up the album and photograph the deep details. So if you are offering albums, you know, photograph the spine. Photograph from here down to show the detail. Come in really close and frame that. So for example, I'm looking here at the, I'm just sort of adding it in there and I've got those little flowers in the background. Now I'm going to shoot this wide open. I'm at 3.5 at the moment, but if I want to get a beautiful detail shot here, just looking at where everything's kind of sitting in the frame. So I still got those sort of flowers in the background. Oh wow. And got that nice close up, but you can see where the, the corner of the box isn't really doing me any favors there because it's cutting through one side. So this is where I would have another look at it. 
come back in and now make sure that the corner of the box is visible, there we go, around that curve. So just around this bit right here. All right, so if I wanna open up my album to get a beautiful photograph, this is where I might sort of have a look at the different colors and photographs that are in here and then style it accordingly but we've got some beautiful sort of blue tones in this gorgeous dress. And I'm okay with the browns because the background being brown because of the timber box. Now you can see how it's kind of going down there. So this is where I'd pop something up underneath it to give it a little bit of height. Kelly, and what lens are you using there? Uh, this is my 24 to 70. So now I'm going to go with these sort of beautiful tones in the dress, silver tones, more with this sort of natural look here. more questions? Uh, silly question, what do you call the white frame boards around the individual photos? Not a silly question at all, it's just a mat. So I use a hinged mat, you can use a slip mat or a hinged mat, but I order mine in bulk through Graphy and they are a, um, a hinged mat so that when I'm popping my photographs in them, um, you can you know, you're less likely to sort of damage them. And hinged, I mean like this. So it's basically a mat and then I close it and stick it down. All right. I know I'm getting a little fussy here. You know, I thought this would be really quick, but yeah, no. 47 minutes, that's quick. Okay, I promise I'm going to go faster. All right. I don't think anyone's going to play anything. Okay. So this is where... Sorry about that noise. Stupid cable. I know. <laughs> Putting this on a bit of an angle. We'll see how that looks. All right. And this is where kind of coming in and getting a few sort of close up shots as well. And I'm not a big fan of that now. I know. Just looking at the way it sort of sits within the frame. Now with the mats, they are, you know, sort of beautifully raised there and there's some texture in them. So coming in and getting a really beautiful close up of that detail. And you can put these as little sort of highlight shots. And then along the side here, 
this is where I would get a nice close-up detail of the, the sort of top and the frame as well. So you can have a lot of fun with coming in and, and getting the different camera angles and the beautiful leather there as well. That's going to be underexposed. So what I love about all of this is when you do go to blog about it, you can show them, you know, the, obviously the craftsmanship, but what I'm going to do now is get a backlit shot of my album. and the way that the light is falling across the grain of the timber. Oh, I just sat down. What do you want? Could you please pass me? Um, I just need something to kind of lift, lift this up here. How much? Um, Roll or gaff tape? Oh, actually, just that box. Thank you. So what I want to do, oh, maybe that's going to be too big. Actually, that little green ball. I'll make Garrett work today. Thank you. Okay, so just that little green ball, just so I can get a little bit more light falling across it there, obviously balancing it. Graceful. <laughs> the camera angle is great. Great. Now I'm just getting the right angle, trying to get the logo sort of lined up nice and straight here. Get a different one. That's nice. Oh, wow. So when I said before about using the light to kind of, you know, help sort of bring out the detail and the grain and, and everything and shows them, you know, the quality of that product. So when you are describing it in a way that it has been handcrafted with Italian leather and um, laser engraved timber, you know, blah, 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 the way that you describe it, you use the photographs to help tell that story and take your potential clients on a journey with you to showcase your photographs. Um, alrighty, the last thing that I'm going to show you very, very quickly, because a canvas is a canvas. Before you move on from the album, somebody did ask earlier when I missed it, um, does this album come with other cover choices? I don't believe so. You can talk to, um, obviously, companies like Graphy, uh, Graphy make and hand create this. You can talk to them about the different options, but they have so many different album choices available. Um, my collection has the two, and I'm only going to photograph one here today because it's just a little example of how to do it. But I'm going to show you now with my um, canvas and... Uh, yeah, could you give me that like that rich brown wrap? Perfect. Yeah, two of them. Yeah, just one. But oh, two would be great. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
obviously you can see we have a little bit of fun here. And again, I keep using the material with all the texture because it's what I consistently use in my, in my shoots. And this is just like a cheesecloth with a bit of stretch in it. Might put that one down the bottom. Go with a bit of a different look. Now this is a bit more square, obviously. Um, and it's got a logo on it. Normally my client products don't have logos on them, but this is one of my studio samples. Okay. So being a nest, I thought it'd be kind of cool to you know, put in a few little leaves and things like that. All right, I promise I'm nearly finished. So yeah, something like this is kind of cool, but it's getting it to kind of wrap around your frame or even using some loose leaves and sort of popping them in there so the colors all tie together. You could use the greens or you could use the, the other side, um, but I'm gonna use kind of both here and just kind of pop them down, you know, in a way that's kind of help frame, frame my image. Alright, so I'll often use sort of little things like this and then I'll have a look at it from above to see if it's, you know, distracting or complementing. You might not need them. Um, they might not look great from above where you've sort of been sitting and you've positioned them down there. And is this canvas from the graphic? Uh, yes, this is a graphic one as well. Just checking my mic pack there. Yeah, good. Alrighty. So yeah, the way that you style them, you know, do it in a way that it's the way that you photograph, you know, in your studio, the different tones and textures that you use. Remember to have a look at the different ratios and the way that you, you know, you might um, use those photographs on your different social media platforms. So squares are obviously great for Instagram and Facebook, and then you've got your portrait vertical for your Instagram stories. And then how you wanna lay them out side by side um, on your website. It's just not doing it for me there. Part of it though, that's what it's all about. It's like, yeah, it. play, have a yeah. look, see what's happening. Add them, take them away. Is it working for you? I will always sort of look at, you know, if it's distracting, if it's adding to the composition, if it's helping to sort of frame and bring detail to it. All right, I'm trying not to get my toes in.
exposure down a bit on that one. I shot that at a third of a stop underexposed actually. So you can see I need to bring my exposure down. Dark frame. And that's really important as well when it comes to showcasing your products. You know, if you overexpose, underexposed, is it going to bring out all of that true detail in the quality of the product that you're selling? That's it. So that's the way that it's supposed to look. All right, so again, have a little bit of a play. You might not need the, the, um, the leaves in there and always get lots of detail shots. With a canvas like this, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna photograph the corners and that beautiful texture. Have a look at the different angles of how the light falls across the product to bring out that detail. You know, and the way that you describe the product, if you're ever struggling, um, you know, to, to give a product a description, contact the company that you are working with because they will help you describe it in a way that really does, um, you know, make it sound absolutely incredible, you know, and you're getting that value. But, yeah. um, do you sign your canvases? No, I don't. Um, on the back, we always put some information on the back of our products so that, you know, if, for example, they might not remember you in years to come or they have a friend or, um, you know, a family member come over and they see it and go, oh my God, that's amazing. I want to see that, um, you know, who took those photographs. The details are there on the back, but not, not on the front. Like I said, this one here is a studio um, piece, so it's got my name on it there. But yeah, when you are photographing them, and getting them ready, think about it in terms of where are you going to put these photographs? And again, add them to your media library and date it, you know, what the products are, put them into folders so you can easily find them when you're ready to share them um, and use them for different platforms, not just your products pricing um, information that you send out to your clients, but create a wow factor with the way that you photograph them and your clients will love them. Even if you've got them hanging on a wall, you might have a space where you can put one of your canvases on a wall, add like a little side table with some flowers and style it that way. Have a look at those homeware magazines though to get some ideas on how they have art hanging on the wall. Because at the end of the day, you know, when I think about my own personal work, I am creating art pieces for people to hang on their wall. So I wanna have a look at the way that, you know, interior designers frame and highlight those pieces in the homes when they are styling them. So when I'm kind of creating photographs, I want to look at that and think, how can I do that, but then keep it on brand with my current style of photography. So yeah, all right, I'm puffed. I really need to do some exercise and get fit, guys. I'm going to be working on that, I can tell you. But yeah, if you've got any more questions, you know, pop them into the group. Uh, like I said, this video is going to stay there and we're going to come back tomorrow with another live. I'll share with you what that is um, tomorrow. And then on Friday, I'm actually going to photograph my own kids. Fingers crossed. Tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> Tomorrow's Friday. It's today, yeah. Thursday. Today's Thursday. No. Yeah. My watch says. I thought today was Wednesday. No. Yesterday was Wednesday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> No wonder I was feeling it today. It's Thursday. All right, please stay home, stay safe, look after yourselves, get creative, keep playing, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.